Welcome to ECE 201 lesson titled Element Constraints on Current and Voltage. Now, in solving for the voltages and currents in a given circuit, we're going to be using mathematical expressions, mathematical equations, to solve for the unknown variables I and V for current and voltage. Here we see a collection of electric components, or one could say a collection of electric devices, or a collection of circuit elements. There are resistors, capacitors, diode, a source of electrical energy, the battery. Here's an operational amplifier. Now let's throw in some wires to connect some of these components together, some subset of the components together. Remember, an electric circuit is a closed path formed by connection of electrical components through which current can flow definition of an electrical circuit. Now the properties of the resulting circuit are going to depend on two things. It will depend what we select for the circuit, which, which elements we're going to use to build the circuit from. And equally importantly, it's going to depend on how those are connected together. Mathematically, what we say is that we solve for the circuit variables, current and voltage, i.e. I and V, by using equations that describe element constraints on current and voltage and by using equations that describe connection constraints on current and voltage. The focus in this lesson is going to be on understanding the element constraints as opposed to connection constraints. Now we'll start today by considering just a handful of ideal circuit elements and then we will end by also considering how those circuit elements, those ideal circuit elements, I should say, compare to some actual electric devices from, found in real circuits. First, consider the ideal resistor. The circuit symbol for the resistor is as follows. And associated with that uh, resistor are voltages and currents. Let's designate a voltage across the resistor, V and a current through the resistor I. Now, this is not standing by itself, it's connected to the rest of the circuit. So, these wires go on to be connected to the rest of the circuit here in a manner that we're not really interested in right now because we're not worried about the connection constraints, we're worried about the element constraints. And the element constraint for the resistor is that V is equal to I times R, where R is a constant in ohms, that's the value of the resistance. I is in amperes and V is in volts. This constraint, V equals IR, is known as Ohm's Law. So, for example, if V is equal to 1 volt and R is equal to 1 ohm, then we can say that I is equal to 1 ampere. So V equals I R, or we could also say that I is equal to 1 over R times V. And sometimes in electrical and computer engineering, we see this 1 over R expressed as a G, capital G. And in that case, the G is called the conductance. R is the resistance value. G is the conductance value. And the conductance value is just 1 over R. So if you have a 10 ohm resistor, its conductance value is 1 tenth. What are the units? The units are Siemens. Uh, so the units of this are not ohms. The units are S, capital S. It stands for Siemens. The units associated with R are ohms. For the next ideal circuit element, let's consider the ideal voltage source. The circuit symbol is as follows. There is a circle, plus and minus sign on it. Uh, it has a value associated with it, let's say V sub S. And again, we can associate with this a voltage and a current. And as before, this is now going to be connected to the rest of the circuit in some way, but our concern is with the element constraints on I and V. Here the constraint is very simple. The voltage source says, the voltage across me is going to have a value of V sub S volts, 
no matter what the current is. The current can be positive, can be negative, it can be zero, but the current through me is independent of the voltage. The voltage is constrained to be V sub S. So if you have a 12 volt uh, ideal voltage source, the voltage across that source is 12 volts regardless of the current. If we are specifically dealing with a battery uh, as uh, representing the voltage source, there's another symbol that's often used uh, and that looks like the following. The wider line for the positive terminal, the more narrow for the negative. In this case, if we say the value is 12 volts, then we're saying that that voltage source represented by the battery symbol, it has a value of 12 volts, irrespective of what the current value is. Another important ideal circuit element is the ideal current source. Again, we start with the circle for the symbol. This time we'll have an arrow designating a current direction. Again, this is going to be connected to the rest of the circuit in a matter which is not of concern to us today. Uh, it will have a value, let's say the value is I sub S, and we can associate with that uh, an I and a V because it's a circuit element that will have a voltage across it and a current through it. And in this case, the constraint is simply that I is going to be equal to IS, regardless of how it's connected to the rest of the circuit. That's the constraint that the ideal current source has. Two other important things we should mention here, we can think of them as ideal circuit elements. One is the short circuit, the other is the open circuit. Suppose we have the rest of the circuit represented generically. And here's a terminal A and a terminal B. A short circuit would just be a wire connected between A and B. So in terms of the voltage and current associated with this, here's the voltage, here's the current. No matter what I is, if it's an ideal short circuit, the voltage would be equal to zero. So the constraint for a short circuit is that you will have zero volts across it regardless of the current flowing through it. Now, should we cut that wire with a uh, wire cutter? So now there's uh, no wire there anymore, uh, or there's a break in the wire. Again, if we talk about I and V, here's V and here's I. Here the constraint is that I is going to be equal to zero no matter what the voltage is. Open circuits and short circuits. Not all connections of ideal uh, elements are possible. For example, if we have points A and B in a circuit, we say there's a 5 volt source connected between them and also a 12 volt source connected between them. The 5 volt source in parallel with the 12 volt source is not possible because that's a contradiction. It can't be 5 volts voltage rise and a 12 volt voltage rise, so we would not put ideal voltage sources in parallel. Neither would we, for example, put a, a voltage, ideal voltage source connected to a short circuit. The short circuit says the voltage between A and B is zero. The voltage says, no, no, it's not, it's V sub S. Well, uh, the uh, real world equivalent would be like laying a wrench across the terminals of a bat car battery. That would be pretty exciting. But that's an, that's an illogical connection and would not be allowed in terms of the ideal circuit elements. Here's a summary of things to date. Uh, for the independent voltage source, as opposed to the dependent sources we'll talk about in other lessons, ideal constraint is that V is equal to a constant value. Likewise, for the independent current source, and for the resistor V equals IR, of course, and we have these equations for the short circuit and open circuit. Now, how well do these ideal element constraints compared to actual devices. For example, uh, if we have a 12 volt car battery, to move an auto and find out. We will use a voltmeter. The reading on the voltmeter is 12.6 volts, 12.61 volts. 
Although the battery is described as a 12 volt battery, the actual voltage is somewhat different, although certainly within the normal range for a car battery. This is the voltage across the battery when no current or negligible current is flowing either from the battery or into the battery. So the open circuit voltage. The ignition's off, no accessories have been turned on. What's going to be the voltage if the headlights are turned on and current is drawn from the battery? Now the reading has changed. It's 12.38 volts. Um, suppose we draw even more current from the battery by also turning on the ventilation fan. Let's put out the maximum setting and we'll also turn on the rear window defroster too just for good measure. And we see that the voltage has dropped to about 11.9 volts. Suppose we start the engine. Initially the voltage drops, then it increases again as the car's charging circuit comes into the picture. Let's compare what we observed with the automobile battery with the ideal voltage source that it might be modeled as. Here's a, the, a battery symbol used this time. A passive sign notation for current and voltage. Uh, ideally it would be 12 volts regardless of the current. We found, in fact, that at zero current, it was somewhat greater than 12 volts. As we increasingly drew current from the battery, the voltage dropped. Now, this region of the curve, since we're using passive sign notation and we see that I times V is negative, that means that the negative I times V means it's delivering power. If we go into the other quadrant, where the voltage was increasing as it was absorbing, energy from the charging circuit, the voltage increased. So we may use this ideal voltage symbol as an approximation in a circuit schematic for a battery. If we want to have something more sophisticated, we will have to add other elements to the circuit schematic to, be, to describe the actual uh, battery. Another way that ideal circuit elements differ from actual circuit components has to do with regions of operation. For the ideal resistor, uh, if it's a 10 ohm resistor, the current through it is V over 10. No matter what V is, I is equal to V over 10. Actual resistor circuit components though will likely be limited in range of operation because of power considerations. Here we see a 10 ohm discrete component resistor. This is a sort that might be found soldered into a circuit board. We're going to apply 12 volts to it. We'll attach it to a 12 volt voltage source. By Ohm's law, the current flowing through it will then be 12 over 10 or 1.2 amps. Postmortem. Resistor destroyed by fire, fire caused by too much heat, heat caused by too much power, power caused by too big an IV product, in this case over 14 watts, and this particular resistor was only related at one fourth watt maximum. Another difference between ideal circuit elements and the actual circuit device. And with the puff of smoke, this concludes ECE 201 lesson titled element constraints on current and voltage. We've considered the ideal constraints in I and V for things such as a resistor, a voltage source, a current source, open circuit, short circuits. And we've also explored some of the differences between ideal circuit elements and actual electrical devices.